Good morning. I'm back in my kitchen again and I've just got back from walking Phoebe who's down here by my feet and I'm making my late breakfast. It's actually pouring with rain so I was soaked so I've just changed my shirt. But um, I want to make a, a follow-up to a couple of videos I've made recently but what particularly one I made about art whilst I was frying mushrooms last time. Um, and also about a, another video I made called something like what do we think? Something like that. We know and nothing. I don't know. Something like that. Because I think I was I made a, made a mistake in one of those, and I want to um, put that right. But I also want to talk about art a bit. So I'll start with the. Um, God, I wish I would remember what it was called. I was out walking the dog, and it was something like I don't think or something. We know nothing. I can't remember anything. Anyway. What I was saying there is that I was expressing the kind of frustration I felt with, you know, people who um, who make baseless assertions, and uh, are based on no research at all uh, and come across as if they you know are really passionate about this thing and act as if they know stuff about it when they clearly don't and what the, the mistake i made and i kind of asked not by what i said but the mistake i made was um was identifying with this word i think that's that phrase i think i think this i think that i said and i was suggesting that people who do that are kind of being intellectually lazy but and as, as i said developing that into baseless assertions, but I don't think that's mostly the case, and I'd, I'd, I'd retract that wholeheartedly. Because I was coming out of that really a bit curmudgeonly, I know, because I'd been reading this philosophy of mind group that I think I mentioned in that video, and a lot of the stuff there was just so irritating, and I was, and I was carrying that irritation over. Um, you know, people, people thinking they were gurus, you know, and making these kind of outrageous claims, or just posting cute pictures, and... Oh, horrible. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I won't get sidetracked. But yeah, I think... Because um, I looked at the comments again on all the videos that I've referred to in that one and subsequent videos I've been looking at, uh, and and uh, and the videos themselves. And when people say I think, it do it often isn't in that kind of self-assertive way at all. Really, people who begin I think, quite rightly I think, um, are usually being much more tentative. I think is usually the beginning of a kind of tentative exploration of a subject, isn't it? It's an expression of what you've got in your mind right now, some possible directions in which those ideas might take you if you were to continue on that route of thought and support it and find things about it. It's to do with that. So, and um, and there's some famous instances of that, isn't there? I'm thinking of um, Charles Darwin's famous drawing. You know, the first drawing he did of a cladistic tree of life kind of thing, and he's right on the margin of a book, I think, or a notebook, and he puts the words "I think" next to it. It's just a really tentative exploration. Oh, I wonder if it's like that. And then, he, of course, he goes off and spends the next 20 years finding out whether that initial thought he had had any merit. You know, he didn't uh, he didn't rest on his laurels and, and wasn't um, satisfied to have had an interesting thought, which I think a lot of us are, and I certainly am at times. Rather, he used that thought as a prompt for action. But that, um, because thinking isn't knowing, that's the other thing which is connected to this, because it relates to some stuff I've been thinking about recently in relation to certainty, prompted by a Richter's Gate video in which he talks about Robert Burton's book, Uncertainty. Not Uncertainty, that's Wittgenstein. On being certain. Because um, what it says in, um, in the Robert Burton book, he's talking about certainty, and he's talking about that leap that a lot of us make at times, or I guess we all make sometimes. It's when we think something, and sometimes that thought is accompanied by a feeling of being certain, you know, and as, as Burton really well documents, certainty is a feeling, you know, being certain is a feeling of something, the feeling of knowing, for sure, um, and doesn't necessarily correlate with the truth of what you feel you know, or what you feel certain about, and, um, and sometimes that, I think, is isn't just an exploration it's it, it kind of completes in a into a an assertion that what you think is also the truth and and, and you you just leap straight from I think to I know because there's a wash of certainty comes over you about what you think I mean we all get that with strongly held opinions don't we regardless of how we effectively research the ideas which would support or disconfirm that opinion we do get that, um, but the, but the I, I think shouldn't really be a straightforward connection to I know, 
I think therefore I know is not what Descartes said, cogito ergo scientia, is not, doesn't make any sense. Um, so that, but, but there is a tendency I think, because of the certainty thing, as I say this, it, it, it describes it in terms of the reward circuits in the brain, Burton anyway, or it recites, cites research that does that, where the feeling of knowing, that feeling of, ah oh, yeah, there's actually a neurological, neurochemical thing happening to us, where we get a little flood of dopamine being washed over us, convincing us and, uh, and motivating us to, to stay with that knowledge, stay with that piece of fact which we feel we've gained uh, access to the truth concerning, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, to the extent that, um, that many of us would seek to, would almost become addicted to that feeling of certainty. You know, because it is, it's a, a chemical thing that's happening in our brains, that. And, and we become kind of almost, as I say, addicted to it and seek out other sources of uh, other sources of, of stimuli that would produce that, which is a kind of biochemical underpinning for confirmation bias. You know, if you think something, and when that thought leads you to get to give you a wash of dopamine, so you get that feeling of knowing, the feeling of being certain, then you're going to want to repeat that, aren't you? So you're going to look around for confirmation of that, so you get the next hit of dopamine. Um, and, and in fact avoid things that would disconfirm it because not only if, if, if something disconfirms it not only does it not give you a hit of dopamine it undermines the, the process by which you can get the next hit so you know, seeking out information which causes you to doubt what you think you might know is effect, it's, it's a little bit like shooting your dealer you know um, so yeah so it's not surprising that people tend to hang on to their certainties and find ways of confirming them but that's not the same thing as doing the I think thing and when I was saying I think I did lump the whole thing in together as if everybody that begins a sentence with the words I think necessarily means I think therefore I know I'm right you're wrong I don't need to read a book I don't need to do any research I just feel I'm right therefore I can postulate about this endlessly and you have to take my word for it anyway that's that's not right a lot of people who say, I think, are doing what I like, which is um, speculating, you know, looking ahead. I think that's what speculate means, isn't it? Kind of looking ahead and getting a vague sense of what might lie in the road ahead. And it's the beginnings of, a, of, a, of an opportunity to, to research, to search out that, um, whether that thing that you might be glimpsing, you know, the cladistic nature of natural selection or whatever else, has any basis. I've been very careful not to fall into the various traps that certainty holds for you. So that's that. That's the first thing. So yeah, if you if if you felt it implicated in that, I apologise. Please think away, <laughs> speculate away. I'm all for that. In fact, my uh, my strap line for my YouTube channel. You can't do strap lines anymore. But my strap line used to be um, bread from the half bakery because I quite liked the idea that some of my ideas themselves were half baked speculations. Um, I think, that kind of thing. So yeah, I'd be shooting myself in the foot, wouldn't I, if I didn't allow, if I criticised all that kind of thing. But the other thing was to do with art. Sorry, because the, um, the the topic that I felt a lot of assertions might be potentially being made was in relation to art. You know, people having intuitions about it, which are good, and then jumping from an intuition to a universalising statement. I feel that art might be a subjective thing. Therefore, it's art subjective, you know, that kind of thing. Or I feel that art might be something to do with skill, or therefore it's to do with skill. You know, that's 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 making the leap to certainty. Um, nothing wrong with the first. Something definitely wrong with the second, in my opinion. But anyway, just to do with art in sense, because there was a comment from Gabby Otter and a small, a small interchange with him. Hi there, Gabby Otter, which is to do with um, well, well, if it's such a vague term, you know, it's got so many definitions. What's the bloody point of it? I think there's some truth in that. I was kind of arguing that sometimes vague terms have a use because they're kind of placeholders for either things which are underdefined, perhaps unknown, or perhaps which are polysemic, have lots of different meanings, or which, you know, perhaps are broad categories, which you can say some general things about, but you have to go into detail to say anything specific. And I'm, I, I, I kind of stand by that, you know, I think. The, the, the quest for a single definition of art is a fool's errand, really. I don't see any point to that. 
I mean, we can have our own definitions, and I think we all should for ourselves, because that's one of the ways that motivates us, isn't it? You know, you, you, you make a kind of mission statement about what you think art is, and then you fulfil the mission, kind of. Um, I think that's fine. Uh, that's, I think, again, that's not a, a universal definition, and I don't think there should be one and could be one, really, myself. myself. We should all have our own. Recognising that this word art does exist, because a lot, you know, once you, obviously I, I work in a, an institution in which that's a, a subject matter, a topic of conversation. I work in a, in a department that is around the arts, in a university that is singularly attached to the arts. We don't do any other subjects at the university I work at, apart from what are broadly thought of as the arts and creative industries kind of topics. Um, so, so what? But, you know, one, but we, what we never talk about is what is art. It just never comes up. Because it's pointless, you know, you, the, the, the interesting stuff happens after you think about something like art. In that, I mean, I would draw an analogy with something like consciousness. Um, I used to go to a lot of consciousness conferences and I used to subscribe to consciousness studies journal and all that kind of stuff. And still do, I read a lot of stuff around that field. But, but hardly anybody talks, says, you know, what is consciousness, really. The, uh, the topics of conversation go underneath that. You have to kind of recognise oh, there is something here called consciousness that is interesting to us all. But all the interesting stuff happens underneath it or inside it, you know, about memory and perception and um, uh, and the feeling of a self and uh, the way the brain relates to it or the way that you know, social constructions of, of various concepts work in relation to it or language works. All the discussion about consciousness isn't actually about consciousness at all. It's about what falls under that broad category, which is not a clearly defined category. It's a fuzzy category. It's polysemic. It has all those different things, the way that art has. And art's the same. You know, the interesting discussions about art are very, I almost never begin with the sentence, what is art? They begin with conversations about how markets work, or how, uh, the, how how vision works, or about presence, or about liveness, or about um, reproduction, about media, about the intentionality, about um, spectator theory, about receptions, about you know, all the forms of communication, about language. You know, uh, all the interesting stuff happens below the broad category. So, so that's that's just you know that really. So I think the what is and the what isn't, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good starting point. I, I'm, not, I'm not knocking it in any way, the what is and what isn't art thing. Um, in fact, I've had some ideas, which I might show you at some point, about potential candidates for what isn't. It's, a, it's just a thing I'm playing with. But, um, but really, I think the interesting discussions happen after that and below that and inside of that to do with specific cases and specific um, ideas. You know, why is this piece, what is that piece of work doing that this other piece of work isn't doing? And how is the, why is that piece of work worth more than, than that piece in that particular market? And why is this thing valued more than that thing? And what happens when you reproduce that? You know, all those kind of questions are the really interesting ones, I think, rather than the very broad one about what is. That's just me though, maybe. Anyway, thank you again for my kitchen. The mushrooms are done, the toast's in. Need to push it down. I was going to make a joke actually about the hissing noise. I was going to pretend I was um, not frying mushrooms at all. I was going to pretend I was abusing snakes. Because I thought what I'll do is I'll have this hissing noise going on and I'll put a snake up like this. But I couldn't get my hands on the snake. So I have actually cooked mushrooms. Anyway, that's the end of that. I'll just show you the Cornish weather. Bloody horrible here today again. Look at that. Horizontal wind and rain. Thanks very much. See you soon.